Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we've got a great little simple hover effect for you today for your gallery. I've got a simple gallery here when I hover over one of these. It's going to grow a little bit. We've got our little icon in there and all the others will do the same here. And of course you can still click on it and add a light box. And that's a great little eye-catching feature to have on your site. People are mousing around, that's going to get their attention pretty quickly, which is what you want. Really easy to do, we've got to do a bit of coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any code that I write, I'll put down below the video, and you're welcome to copy and paste it, use it as you need. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And once enabled, let's go down, and I'll delete this, and we'll start from scratch. So I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside, I've got a row, the green tab, and it's a single column within this row. I'm going to hit the little button to add a module. Divi comes as standard with all the light gray modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. Today, I'm going to use a little gallery module. Now let's add some images. I'm going to select a group of images here. I'm holding my shift key down selecting the first one, then selecting the last one. If you hold your shift key down, it'll select everything in between. I'm going to load all of those. Okay, well, there's what we got so far. Not quite what I want. I want to get rid of the title. I want to display more images than that. So if we roll down a little bit, order's fine. Image count, I think I've got about 12. So let's put 12 there. Got elements here. I really don't want to show the title caption or pagination, so I'm going to turn those off. We've not actually got any pagination because we've got all 12 images showing. Don't want to link this to anything, and I don't want to have a background. Now my hover effect's still working there. I'll take that away in a moment. Yours won't be doing that when you load your gallery at first. So if we go over to our design here, layout is fine, I want the grid layout. Thumbnail orientation landscape's fine too. Overlay, well, I'm gonna have an overlay icon and I'm gonna make it white. And overlay background color, I don't wanna see any overlay background color at all, so I'm gonna make that transparent. And the icon I actually want to use here is an eye. DV's just teamed up with Font Awesome, so there's an awful lot of icons. You can just put in a search term like that or you can scroll through if you just want to look at them all. Best way to do that is hit this little button here and they'll all pop out into a little break box for you. And you can start scrolling through and there's quite a lot of scrolling because like I say, they've just added font awesome. So there's a lot of great icons there. Okay, well that's all I really need to do here. What I'm gonna do, we've got our little gallery going here. I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna save my page changes. Now to make this work today, as I said earlier, we've got to do a bit of coding. And to do that, we need to go to our theme customizer. To get to your theme customizer, go to your dashboard. Once at your dashboard, go down to appearance and then customize. That's going to bring you to this page here. I've temporarily set my little gallery page to my home page in the home page settings just so you can see what's going on when we start coding. Just below home page, you'll see additional CSS. This is where we need to write our code. There's a little code I wrote before. Let's delete that and we'll start from scratch. Whenever you write code, it's a great idea to give it a title. And for a title, it's forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you write in between the stars will not be read as code. So let's say gallery hover. That way, if you write a lot of code, it makes it a lot easier to find if you've got titles. Also, if anybody comes and edits the site after you, it makes it a lot easier for them. Okay, well, first thing we need to do is identify our little gallery items here. Now I'm gonna publish and refresh because at the moment this shouldn't be doing that. It's still doing it because of the code we had in there. So let's publish this. And I'll just refresh this page. And let's go back into our additional CSS. Okay, we need to find out what these are. As you can see, the hover effects stop there. There's our little icon we put in. There's no little overlay there. 
Okay, what I want to do is right click and inspect. I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Google Chrome is a free download. So there's our inspector right there. And here's our image. And if we just roll up, as you roll up, it's gonna sort of highlight things that you're rolling up. So at the moment it's highlighting the image, which is what we want. So there's a class name there. It says class, ET, PB, gallery, image. Then there's a gap and landscape. That's another class name right here. I wanna copy this first class name. So I'm gonna double click on it. I'm just going to select the bit I want, which is this first class name here, ETPB Gallery Image. I'm going to copy that. Now, it's a class name, so all class names have to have a dot or a period in front. So there's the dot, and we'll paste in the class name. We can now target these images with some CSS. So I can get rid of our inspector now. And we'll open and close some curly brackets. Don't forget this code will be down below if anybody just wants to copy and paste. Okay, I want to create a hover effect. So what I'm going to do after the gallery name here, the image right there with no gap, I'm going to put a full colon and the word hover. And again, no gap between the colon and hover. If you put gaps in, it's not going to work. So it's image, no gap, colon, no gap, hover. That way we can create a hover effect. And what I want it to do, I want it to sort of grow a little bit. So I'm going to use a bit of transform scale for that. So I'm going to say transform, colon, scale. Open some round brackets there. Again, no gap after scale for the round brackets. And I'm going to have it scale by 1.2%. So it's going to get sort of 20% larger. So 1.2, let's make it 1.25 perhaps. It'd be a quarter larger that way. Okay, and let's put a little semicolon on the end there. Now when I hover over, as you can see, it's scaling. Now I kind of want to slow that down a little bit for a bit of grace. And to do that, I'm going to use a bit of transition duration. So I'm going to drop down one more and say transition dash duration, colon. How long do we want it to take? I want mine to take mm, maybe half a second. So I'm going to say 0.5, 0.5s, semicolon. We always put a semicolon on the end. If you fail to do that, it won't read the next line of code within your brackets here. So unless it's the last one, you want to make sure you put that in there. Okay, well that should slow that down a bit. That's better. And just for a little bit of extra fun, let's have it have a bit of box shadow perhaps when we roll over it. So again, we're on the hover state. I'm going to drop down one more. And let's give it some box shadow. And let's make it say zero picks left and right. I'll make it 12 picks up and down. Make it about 18 picks spread. And the color I'm gonna use is a sort of dark gray, which hashtag 777. You can use a hex code or RGBA or whatever you wanna use there. Okay, now we should have a bit of a box shadow. There we go, it's sort of lifting it off the page a little bit. And of course this works with all of these here. And that's it really, very easy to do. Like I say, that's a very eye-catching little thing to have on your site. Let's just publish this. Go back to our little page here. There's our old one. When I refresh this, well, let's save the changes and exit the visual builder or refresh the page. And there it is. And like I say, that's a nice little feature. And we've still got our little light box effect we can use. Now, if you've got one, more than one gallery and you just want to perhaps affect one gallery, because once you do this, if you've got a gallery, it's going to do this to all your images. If you perhaps just wanted to affect this particular gallery, we could give this a class name of its own. And to do that, I'll just go back into the builder. I'm going to go in to my little gallery module here, little dark tab for the module. I'm going to go over to advanced. I'm going to go down to CSS IDs and classes. You could give it an ID. I'm going to use a class for this today. And let's just call it gal1 for one of a better one. That way we can target this gallery specifically. 
like I say, you only need to do this if you've got more than one gallery and you don't want to affect all of them. So all we need to do is save those changes there. We'll save our page changes here. Let's go back to our customizer now. And all you need to do if you want to just target this specific gallery, is before our class name here, we need to add that other class we've given it. So it'll be dot gal one just before it, just like that. And that will just target this specific gallery. I won't put that down below, but that's if you have more than one gallery and you just want to target this one specifically. So let's delete that. So there you go, guys. That's how to create a great little simple hover effect for your gallery. Nice little eye catching thing. And then if you need to, you can specify which gallery you actually want to target. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.